This feature is presented by New Era Graphics. As league president, one of my jobs is trying to publicize it and sell it. And then I was reading sporting news about some college coach who'd been over to Russia. And I thought, gee, you know, we could do that, get some support from sponsors. Maybe that's something that would set us apart. I brought it up to the league, and there were some mixed feelings. And in the end, uh, the Albany owner stood up in the meeting and said, look, if we get zero sponsors, it's going to cost us $65,000 each. There's eight teams. I will take my one-eighth, and I'll take anybody else's one-eighth, because we're going to do this. We uh, made contact, we had to go to the commissioner's office to get permission, met with Bob Giamatti, and he was gracious enough to give us permission to go. In fact, he was going to join us for the dinner at the end of the trip. Unfortunately, he passed away the month before. I thought Bart Giamatti, you know, had a great vision to try and, uh, you know, start spreading the game of baseball worldwide, and you now see the, the benefits of that with the Classic. Each team was supposedly responsible for X number of players, which would give you enough to go over there. And uh, Mr. Steinbrenner was, was one that he didn't want to risk the players, so he sent the staff. And, and again, with, uh, with a lot of equipment that, that I don't know what we would have done if he hadn't done that, to be honest with you. He was the guy that really funded the trip, you know, from the equipment standpoint, the staffing standpoint. He put a lot into that. Uh, the only thing he didn't allow was his players to go. And, uh, but, you know, that's, that was kind of his prerogative, obviously. The Tigers approached me about it because they, uh, we didn't send any players. Um, so they asked me if I would go and represent the Tigers. And I, and I knew that uh, it was still a communist country, but uh, I knew that they were starting to transition the other way. I had a little bit of a reservation, um, but I thought how cool to go to Russia, uh, the Soviet Union, to be part of a team that, uh, into a country that didn't play baseball. I mean, get to teach and talk and play, play the game that I, that I absolutely love. I think guys were selected not only for ability, but for character. There were recommendations that were made from each major league parent club. So we, we, uh, we had really quality young people that went. We were there for 16 days. Uh, started out in Kiev, went to Tallinn, Estonia, went to Moscow. Basically, we were playing games and putting on clinics. Obviously, you go over there and the security was really tight. I mean, guys weren't allowed to just freelance and go out on their own. When we went over there, uh, not knowing what they had, what we could use as far as uh, cleaning uniforms and stuff like that, I decided to take my own stuff. Just, just luckily, and it turned out to be the best thing in the world because they had no washers and dryers and stuff over there. So I spent uh, most of the evening uh, doing laundry, uh, been over on a tub in the, in the shower area. We played games in, in big soccer stadiums. It was 280 feet to right field. You had these these little benches that you, you know, like Little League, you sat on. There was no screens, nothing, no backstop. Charlie Eschbach, who was the president of the Eastern League at the time, came up to me and says, Murray, we need to do something on the field that's memorable. We need you to build the first pitchers down here at our next site. So I get there and I had like three kids there helping me and I'm, you know, I'm, or build this down. It, didn't, it wasn't much, but they made it to be bigger than, than, than it really was. I mean, they had the whole first pitch, first mound, Charlie on the hill, cameras flashing about all four or five of them. You know, it was, uh, it, it was fun. I grew up in a, you know, a fan of the Olympics and watching on TV that when the, the, the American National Anthem was played, our National Anthem, my National Anthem, was played to, to be able to experience that in the Soviet Union was, yeah, it, 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 that, that heart race a little bit, you, were, you felt good. Uh, and every time I hear it now, it's, it has a little different meaning for me. When they play the National Anthem, all of a sudden you realize, hey, you know, we're all in these different uniforms, but, uh, but we're playing for the United States and we're bringing the United States game into the Soviet Union. And that was pretty, you know, special. I thought the competition would be a little bit better. Uh, but if you've never grown up, I think this is the thing about baseball, you have to grow up playing it. You have to grow up from a very, from a very small age and uh, you acquire 
you know, the skills necessary to, to play it. I didn't realize, you know, how, how backward they really were in that area. Like, for instance, they didn't have uh, a glove for a left-handed throw. It was really interesting to watch because they'd studied it, obviously. They had a shortstop who could field anything that you hit at him. He was a tremendous fielder. Couldn't hit a lick. You had a center fielder who could run down any ball there was, except he might not catch it. The physiotherapist, uh, one thing he would do is he would sit with me almost every day and he'd say, what's the prototype second baseman? What's the prototype shortstop? They always wanted to know what the prototype was. You know, which in, in our game, as you know, I mean, there really aren't the, so necessarily prototypes of those different positions, but that's how they saw it, how to break down. Because they, what they want to do is recruit young athletes that were the prototype for that position. They had a, a decent idea. They took like the shot putter and he was the catcher and they took a soccer guy and he was a shortstop and a soccer player to play second. A soccer... So they put the athletes in the middle and they, and they took the javelin thrower, he was the pitcher, you know, that type of thing. So they, they had a, a pretty good idea of, of how to put the team together and what kind of athletes, who the, where the arms should go, where the athletes should go. Um, but they hadn't really learned much about how to run bases, how to swing a bat, how to field a ground ball, how to catch a fly ball. So that, that was a little bit of an eye opener. They, you know, they had a science about what they were doing. And um, it was in its infancy. You know, they were nowhere close to being competitive. The baseball had not been ingrained in them. They, they were a little unsure about themselves. So, you know, the first couple of games, they, they didn't have a hit. The, the scores got so lopsided at times, I had to tell our guys to don't make it look obvious, but let's make out so we can get the inning over with. Steve Scarsone and myself, second, I was playing first base at the time, kind of, you know, said, hey, if there's a ball that's hit well enough between us, don't let it go, Let you know, a hit. Something for them. Well, about that time, big boxer, just a, just a huge man that uh, he connects with that aluminum bat and the ball goes shooting between us. We kind of look at each other. And I was playing way over by the bag, just kind of ensure that there was a ball go through. And uh, next thing I know, Troy Neal was the right fielder. I didn't, we didn't bring him into the equation. But there he was, filling the ball, came up, fires. I'm standing right next to the bag, go, caught it, just the base running hitter stopped about three quarters away, and you could just see the steam because he went from this grand level emotion to this another emotion of just I'm pissed off. You know, after that, we we they got the idea of kind of integrate the two teams and put us together, and, and then the competition kind of came back to play. It was a little more exciting uh, uh, for both sides, really. We were really uh, making friends. We were, we, were, we were literally breaking down barriers. It was a great trip. It was fun to be part of, uh, historic in some avenues in a very small way for some people. It's almost like, uh, almost like a little family, you know, that went over there. You know, we started out as this group that came from all these different directions and became kind of a family for 17 or 18 days and went over there. And now you come back and you've got all these experiences, all these things to talk about. If there's ever baseball for real in the Soviet Union, we had a little, a very small part of it. You know, hey, maybe we touch some, some man that's a dad now that, you know, has a glove and a ball and a bat that he hands to his kid or his grandson along the way and say, hey, you know what? It tells the same story. That, that's, that's kind of what we hold on to. When I got back, uh, I did a, uh, uh, I had just been named the manager of our AAA club in, in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and I went to a, uh, a Clipper of the Year banquet, uh, and one of the writers asked, uh, we understand you just came back from a trip to Russia, can you summarize that in a couple of quick statements? And I said, yeah, I said, uh, Number one, I never thought I'd see the day I'd kiss the ground in the South Bronx. And number two, I never thought I'd see the day I'd tell my wife she was beautiful. And uh, so this was, uh, that went over very big as you can well imagine. But I think I was in the doghouse for about three months.